the drop in center. And uh, we're going to start off just by giving a brief overview of what our agencies currently do. Uh, we figured it's best to not assume that everyone knows all the details. And so basically the drop-in center is Cincinnati's open door for the homeless. Is where when weather is like this, people can come no matter what and you know there's going to be room uh, to stay. Uh, our basic job is to get people indoors and provide them with shelter. However, we're not content with that. You know, our goal is not to have people just merely come inside. We want people to change their lives and to have the drop center be a place where they can point to and say, this is where my life was turned around. So we provide uh, intake services for everyone who comes through our doors. We also have nine case managers that provide counseling. And those are geared towards people who have been here the longest. Then you know, we on site have a drug and alcohol treatment program for 18 uh, men uh, going through a six month drug and alcohol recovery program. We also have 18 units of transitional housing where people can stay for up to two years as they're getting their life back together. And then we have uh, 85 units of permanent housing that we either control the subsidies for or we provide the counseling for. So we have a direct linkage for Again, people are long-term homeless with permanent housing. Our goal, of course, is to that we'd have more, at some point, have more units of housing than we need of shelter. But at this point, we do have, have both available. Well, you done? Yeah. Okay, uh, again, my name's Roger Howell, and um, one of our divisions in our organization is City Gospel Mission. Um, we have, I think just one quick thing that both Pat and I um, have in common, and I appreciate what the drop-in center does, um, is that there are all sorts of different types of homeless people. Um, there are just not um, the stereotype person that lives under the bridge, but there are several types, and Pat works with all of them, and, or attempts to work with them, and we attempt to work with them all. But there's the chronic, um, which maybe could be stereotyped as living under the bridge and have been like that for quite a while. Um, there's the transient that could be passing through Cincinnati. And then there's the situational homeless person, which has got there because of uh, mental illness, economic change in their life, uh, alcohol and drug addiction, all of those different types of things. So there's a wide variety of people, and they are people. Unfortunately, sometimes there's people in our city that don't treat them as people, but they are, and they're wonderful, and they have their own stories and their own difficulties. And so what we have found in trying to help all of these different type of people, the one thing that's crucial from our um, point of view is building a relationship with them. The stronger the relationship we can get with them, the better um, that we see a uh, change in their life and response from them. So, uh, and I know Pat knows that, and he does that also, but um, from our point of view, that's how we view it. All of our programs are designed um, with the intention of building a better relationship with that person. Um, so our feeding programs, um, you know, we feed 100 breakfasts, 100 dinner, and interesting, oftentimes those are different people. They're not the same people between breakfast and dinner. And that's designed to build a relationship with our staff and our volunteers. Uh, we do a little bit of clothing uh, to meet the needs there. But once again, that's more, from our point of view, to build a relationship with um, than the actual clothing or the food. Um, then we go into shelter. Um, we have um, shelter programs of different types. We have in our shelters, we have emergency coming off the street. We have a program for those people who are working and trying to reestablish their life. Uh, we call that the workforce program. We have special needs pro um, shelter for people who come in who have um, mostly physical difficulty, um, but we're working on getting solved or stabilized those issues so that we can move on in their life. Um, we also have a transitional um, program. We call that Exodus helping people transition off the street into stable living. Um, and that's, uh, right now we have 16 uh, men in that. 
and a little bit separate, and I'm going to just put a little plug in this, um, we do have a 40-bed women's program. I would not classify that as homeless, though. Um, I would classify that as more transitional programming. Um, although a few of the women do come out of homeless, most of them don't. Most of them come out of the jail or the prison system. Um, so we do have women's programs, but mostly for emergency and homeless, it would be uh, men at our facility on Elm Street. Um, <coughs> then we have some independent living. We have five beds for independent living. Um, and we have, which we're very proud of, a growing aftercare program for men that have come out of our different programs, keep them engaged. Um, one of the things that um, many of the transitional programs are having um, problems with, one of the men that has come through our program is leading that. He's working with 40, 50 men and having Saturday morning meetings with 18, 20 uh, on a going basis. So that's been very successful. Um, so I think that's sort of a, a quick overview of our programs. Yeah. I think uh, we are both, we see similar clients, we have similar strategies to engage people, but then we're also facing similar challenges. I know with the economic downturn, a lot of the jobs that uh, our residents would have gotten, entry-level jobs, service jobs, are not existing anymore. And so when you know, people are trying to step up into our recovery program, into our permanent housing, it's being it, it tougher and tougher for them to find jobs. And people who had jobs are now losing them. That is translating into uh, longer stays in emergency shelter. Uh, at least at the drop-in center, uh, our, our average stay is up around 20% last year. We haven't seen an influx of new clients yet, although that is also a concern that as the economic downturn grows and eventually there'll be these kind of economic refugees who have lost their home, lost their job, uh, come, you know, new into the, the realm of the homeless. But as of now, it's just it's more difficult for people to get out. Um, again, the, the, another similar challenge we face is, is what Roger touched on, is, is uh, the, the, the clients that we serve are have, have a negative perception. You know, people view them the homeless as uh, bad people, failures, dangerous, criminals. There's just a lot of stereotyping that goes on. And instead of like uh, you know, our work every day where we get to meet people on an individual basis, see their struggles, see them as individuals, a lot of people maybe are driving by and see them with a broad brush. And then to compound that, agencies that are trying to help this population, to get people into housing, get people jobs, Sometimes are viewed as aiders and abettors of the problem. So you get the, the idea that human services is somehow a bad term. And somehow you, you know, ser you know, serving, you may trying to make the, the problem better is, is actually something that needs to be avoided and uh, uh, minimized. So this is uh, seen a variety of ways. But most recently, in this past year, there's been a move to actually change the zoning code of Cincinnati to put in Thirty odd new pieces of legislation that would put severe restrictions on any kind of human services. I mean, not only just for the homeless, but for any group that is seeking to do human services. Uh, and you know, from uh, restrictions of where you can locate, to how close you can be to other human services, the size of your programs, the definition of your programs, uh, all these things. Uh, they're they're uh, attempts to actually change the zoning code of Cincinnati. To and then, with also within this realm, is there's moves to uh, change the way services are provided. Uh, at the same time, there are being cuts made to fund services that are being provided. And so there's currently going on, which is a challenge we face, but also an opportunity called the Homeless to Homes process uh, that Roger and I are both involved in, which at the best is a way to really look at homeless services to see how they could be done better, how we can uh, garner more uh, resources to the system to do uh, a world-class job of, of, of building those 